Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Hi. All right, I apologize. I am a little bit late. It has been one of those mornings. It was going so well, and then it went so bad so fast. <laughs> so we're here, finally. Uh, so I'm just gonna give it a minute, wait for a few of you to pop on. Everyone else, grab yourself a coffee. If you're watching this later on while you wait, or you can just drop all this too. So I'm just gonna give this suitcase a quick clean. Waiting for a few to pop on before I start. I was hoping to have had this already clean, but I'm doing it now instead because I'm not organized, as organized as what I was meant to be. Good morning. I can see there's a few of you. I'll just give it another moment while I'm cleaning. Say hi, let me know you're there. I always like seeing who's watching. Eureka chalk finish in the color cloud which is a white and if you follow if you followed me long enough you know that I don't do white so I'm hoping this goes well but I'm doing white because this is going to be a prop within the store so I've got a storefront I have got some absolutely gorgeous pillows. I'm not doing the inside this morning, so I'm not going to clean the inside straight away. I'll do that later. Um, I've got some gorgeous pillows coming, so I wanted a really nice piece to stage them in. And then I've also got a new product coming. It's not new to me. I have stocked it in the past, but it's coming back after a lot of demand and a lot of thought about it. And um, so I've got a new product coming. And it was meant to be here Friday, but it hasn't arrived. So it's Saturday today for anybody who's catching up on this. Um, it didn't arrive. So I'm hoping it will arrive this week. And then next weekend's live. I'm trying to do these every weekend now. Um, it's, it's going all right, but we'll get there. <laughs> um, I'm hoping I'll arrive this week. I'm like crossing everything that they do. because I'm sick of waiting for deliveries. It's driving me nuts at the minute but um hopefully the new product will arrive i'm not going to tell you what it is but the new product will arrive and i'm hoping next weekend's live we will use that product and this is going to be my display piece for that product within the shop as well to show how to use it um and then it also gives me a chance to film how to use it because i do like to show how to use all the products that i stock and then um there was no more to that sentence. I started like there was going to be. So yes, this piece is gonna house our pillows. It's going to show off the new product. We'll also, um, I'll show you how to seal A, the new product, and seal chalk paint as well. So it's a big enough piece. I'm not gonna have it for sale. So I think I might even do, we'll do some wax. We'll do some top coat. Um, we might even use some hemp finishing oil as well to seal the chalk paint. So we'll do a few different finishes, but that will probably be, I might even do two lives next weekend because I do just want to get it done. So I might do one Saturday, one Sunday. So keep an eye out for those as well, but I'll try and make an announcement at the start of each morning. So let's get started. There's quite a few of you on. Who's watching this morning? Hello, Sharon. Hello, Alison, Mary, Michelle, hello, good morning. All right, so let's get started. Um, to clean, last week I talked about prep and the week before I've talked about prep quite a lot. I've got a lot going on in the background where I'm just getting pieces prepped, ready to bring in as I need to. Um, so with prep, and this goes for any paint, um, any finishing that you're doing, whether you're just stripping it back and staining the timber 
um, or you're painting, it goes for everything. The very first thing you need to do and you must do is prep. Um, uh, sorry, prep. Um, is cleaning. You must clean your piece. So dirt, grime, old cleaning products, all of that can impact on your finish. Um, and you may not see that impact straight away. You may see it six months down the line when your paint starts coming away. Uh, so always, always, always clean really, really well. I don't know how well I can show you the water. It's not absolutely filthy this morning, but it's dirty enough. So I just use, you can use whatever dish detergent you like. This morning I have used, I'm not sure if you can see that. See how filthy that is? It's really brown. Um, so all of that, you don't want to leave that on there. Use whichever soap you like. I have used Purico's Lemon Myrtle Cleaner, which I will show you. You know what I'm talking about. Purico's Lemon Myrtle Cleaner. I love it because it smells amazing. I also love it because it's Aussie made. But you can use whatever you like. Um, Dish soap's really good if you've got a really, really grimy piece with lots of built up oil uh, because it's designed to cut through that. But it doesn't matter what you use. I'm not going to tell you that the Pure Eco product's the only one on the market because it's not, um, or the only one that you should use because you can use whatever you like. So just make sure that it's not heavy on the chemicals. That's my only advice. But other than that, go for life, okay? Use whatever you like. But you want to make sure you've cleaned it really, really well. Once you have cleaned, then you go and do all the rest of your prep. So even if you are sanding back to raw timber, you need to clean first. Cleaning is going to make sure that all that dirt and grime isn't then going to be pressed into your fresh timber as you're sanding. Okay, so you need to clean first. And I, will, I tell everybody who walks in here, I tell everybody who asks, what do I do? You need to clean. And if you purchase any of the products from me, you'll see it's like one of the very first steps um, on your information sheets as well. So clean, 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 inside and out. I'm gonna clean the inside of this later. I'm not gonna paint it today. I just wanna paint the outside today um, because it's my, it's the main piece of this suitcase. Um, once you have finished cleaning with the, so I've got Pure Eco Chalk Finish and Pure Eco Silk Finish. Um, and I'll talk about the difference in a second. But once you have cleaned, you can then scruff sand and or prime. It is up to you. I do highly recommend a scruff sand and I will maybe show you. Let me see. Do I still have that sandpaper here? Not the one that I wanted. I spend my life moving because I'm losing them. All right, so scruff sanding, I will very quickly show you. It's not necessary for this piece. This has got loads of texture in it. I'm using chalk paint. I'm not concerned about adhesion. But I do recommend scruff sanding, particularly for beginners when you're just sort of working out what goes with what and what, what needs to be scruff sanded and what doesn't. It takes a few minutes. It's not the end of the world. I scruff sand about 95% of my pieces, but it is up to you. So all you're going to do is you're going to take a nice coarse piece of sandpaper. You want... 60 to 80 grit, I recommend 80 most of the time. Um, you, can go rough, ooh, you can go rougher if you like, but nice coarse sandpaper. Um, I've just got a little piece here, and all you're doing with scruff sanding is you're scratching the surface, okay? You are not going back to raw timber, obviously this isn't timber, but you are not going back to raw timber. All you are doing is giving the paint something to grab onto, okay? So you're scratching that very surface layer, you, if you want to go all the way back to raw timber, then you're doing more than just scruff sanding, all right? So all you're doing, and it's a few minutes, this whole suitcase will be maybe be five, 10 minutes, okay? But all you're doing is all over the surface, and it's just a couple of minutes, all over, that's it, done. So do the other end. And you're just scratching it up. All right, so it's a few minutes. It's not hours of sanding. It's not overly dusty. You can see all the dust that's come off there onto my fingers. 
it's not heavy duty sanding. I quite happily scrub sand within my house or here in the workshop, okay? Um, if you can go outside, go outside. But it's not, it's not heavy duty sanding. You're not making a huge amount of dust. Um, but it does significantly help with your adhesion uh, on most surfaces. So, and I talk, I might do, I'm just thinking of what pieces I have coming up. I've got a piece coming up actually that will, that I can demonstrate when I would and wouldn't scruff sand because it's got two different finishes on it. So it's going to be a few weeks, but I will try and work that in for a live so I can talk more about that. But if you're unsure, just do it. Okay. Uh, that's the easiest way for me to tell you what to do, <laughs> pretty much. Okay, so scruff sanding is just helping with your adhesion. Now, if you have a piece that is likely to bleed, this is obviously, it's a suitcase, it's leather, or it's a, some sort of leather, um, it's not gonna bleed, okay? Bleeding happens when the oils of a timber leach through, and they can come through as pinks, as yellows, as oranges. Um, I've had red. It's not that common, but it does happen, okay? It's not as common as it looks. In all my years, actually my last one happened two days ago, but in all my years doing this, I've had maybe five pieces bleed, okay? So it's not super, super common, but everybody comes across it at some point, unfortunately. It is easy to fix. In that case, we go in with Purico Basin Blocker. It's available in a white and a gray. So this is our white and this is our gray. This is the product that I use. This is the product that I recommend. There are other products on the market. Try them all, try one, whatever you feel like doing, but um, find one that works for you. Find one that you're comfortable using. I like this one because it's water-based. It's eco-friendly, it doesn't stink, and it's got incredible coverage, so it also helps with the coverage of my paint as well, not just blocking the tannins. One coat of that, and then you can go in and paint. So, and I can, I don't think I've ever shown, sorry, I know I'm walking away from the camera. As I said, I'm not organized today. I don't think I've ever actually shown this piece in a live, but this little cabinet, I purchased it because it's like so stinking cute, but, when I painted it, and this has actually been painted with milk paint. When I painted it, it was this beautiful, is any of it still white? See this, oh, it still looks yellow. This bit up here, it was this really beautiful milky white, which I loved. And then I waxed it, and then all of this yellow, see how that bit's there still white, but then all of this is yellow? It bled like absolute crazy. And it's turned more and more yellow. There's an ink dye or something down here. I don't know what that is because it wasn't there beforehand. You can see all through up here where it started to bleed and where it hasn't. This is after I waxed. So it does happen. It often takes you by surprise when it does happen. And this, I painted this with milk paint. I was never ever going to, because I was going for this really rustic um, finish. I was never going to prime this. So when it happened, I was so disappointed, but it's um, now prime place here on my prep shelf in the studio and I use this in all my workshops as well. And we really, in my workshops, I go into so much depth with prep and prime and why it happens and what to do when it happens, etc. But it happens, it's not the end of the world, it is fixable. If it happens after you've painted, you can come in and spot treat with the basin blocker. But um, if you're unsure, look, just prime, it's up to you. Um, and as you go, you'll learn more and more whether or not it's worthwhile you priming every single piece. Um, I don't. I. It's been a really long time since I last primed. Um, I also don't use white. Today's the first time I've used white in for a whole piece in three years, two years. It's been a while. Um, if you're painting white, I do recommend priming. It helps with your coverage significantly. Um, if you are painting with Pure Eco Silk Finish, I do recommend that you prime as well. Pure Eco also recommend that you prime. It just helps with your coverage. Um, so, and then that brings us into our paints. So when you're choosing your paints, let me grab the Silk Finish. 
As I said, I'm not organised today, so I apologise for walking off every two seconds. We're getting there. So, Purika have two chalk paints, uh, two, two paints is what I was trying to say. We've got chalk finish and silk finish, and I will show you the labels. So, chalk finish is the blue label. Blue, hang on, where's the blue? They're on the pure. All right, and then we've got silk finish is the purple. All right, so the biggest difference between the two paints is that silk finish has a built-in top coat. It is an all-in-one mineral paint. It has a built-in top coat so that you do not need to go back and add a top coat, add a wax, add oil to seal it, okay? So it's got seven day cure time. Once it's cured, it uses normal. Chalk finish, on the other hand, is a chalk paint. It is porous and it must be sealed. You cannot leave chalk paint unsealed. Um, it can scratch quite easily, although it does adhere incredibly well. Um, it will scratch very easily. Um, and it also, it, it's very, very porous. So a drop of water will mark it significantly. Um, and if that happens, then you just have to repaint that section. So you do need to seal it, oils, etc. They'll all, it will just become really grubby. So making sure that you seal your chalk finish, your silk finish, you don't have to seal. Um, they're both water-based, they're both Aussie-made, they're both eco-friendly. Um, the pigments are incredible in both. I find, and now I've used, I've actually painted, I'm not gonna walk off again, I've painted a square of pretty much every single color at this point in both. And the one thing that I have found is often silk finish needed an extra coat to get full coverage, whereas chalk finish often doesn't. That's a minor thing, it's not a big thing for me, it might be a big thing for you, but it is something to keep in mind. Some of the silk finish colours do need more coats than what the chalk finish do. Not the end of the world, just an extra coat of paint, um, but most are about two coats and you're there. Sometimes you will need three, obviously whites, even in the chalk, you're often going to need a third coat. So, chalk and silk, and I've done the prep, let's paint. So, the colour I have chosen is Cloud, which is this really beautiful, it's like a grey, a grey white, it's um, got a greyer base. There's all different whites, if you want a pure, go for the, um, go for Snow, Snow is the pure. Cotton is quite pure as well, but not quite as bright as Snow. Otherwise, we've then got seashell, calico, um, what else? Gumnut, seashell, calico, and gumnut are our creamy whites. Macadamia and cloud are our um, grey whites. And then we've also got sugarcane, which is a green white. It's got a greener tint to it. So there's plenty of options. Um, and I will, I have got all the boards painted now, so I might even do a photo of them all stacked so you can see the differences between them too. All right, so whenever you open a new thing of paint, always make sure you give it a good stir. I've already given this a shake. It's one thing I have got prepped this morning is I've given it a shake. Um, I started using this a couple of days ago. You're not gonna use a lot of paint. It is, you'll find the chalk paints often a lot thicker. Then the silk finish, but if you are finding it's too thick, if you're finding it's drying too fast, then go in with a spray bottle, use a damp brush. There's all different things you can do to help your paint um, go on nice and evenly. You're going to have more brush strokes with chalk paint than what you will with silk. That just, that's just part of the territory with chalk paint. Uh, and what you do with one, you can do with the other. So if you want to layer, if you want to blend, if you want to stretch, you can do it with both. Just keep in mind, Silk's got that built-in top coat. Once it's started the cure process, it's going to be a lot harder to um, distress. So just keep that in mind. You want to be distressing within sort of 24 hours with the Silk. The chalk, you can come back weeks later and do it. All right. So the brush I'm using, I'm using a flat, I don't know if you can see that, a flat uh, 50 mil paintbrush. Um, these are the ones that I stock in store. I absolutely love them. Despite the paint that looks like it's built up, it still feels as soft as the day that I opened it. So, 
I think you're in a good position today, actually, so I won't move the camera unless you want me to. But when you're loading up your brush, I will come closer so you can see what I'm doing. That's helpful, isn't it? All right, so dip your brush in. I go about that far up, about halfway. And then I like to sort of brush it off. And what that does is it pushes the paint into the bristles, into the center of the brush. And then I dip again. And I like to keep a decent amount, but not so much that it's just gonna go everywhere when I paint. All right. And then we'll start, can you see all of this? There we go. All right. So I'm gonna paint all these as well. And I sort of like to do this bit of a cutting in motion around things like that, because then I can do my life, nice long brush strokes and I end up with less marks, etc. Whereas if I did my nice brush stroke and then I went in and did this cutting in, I would end up with a lot of texture where I don't want it. And I'm also, I will note, I'm not looking for this to be perfect. I want it to be a little bit rustic, okay? All right, so once I've cut all those in, and you will feel between using the two brush, the blah, 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 the two paints as well, you will feel chalk sort of grab a little bit more, whereas silk will just, it just keeps sliding. It's quite nice to paint with because it does just slide over your surface. That a little bit easier, but I'm a chalk girl. I love chalk paint. I love this chalk paint, so this is silk finish. Um, I've loved it. I've loved it since the day I first started using it. Um, and I'm never going to stop using it for as long as it's manufactured because I absolutely love it. I think it's a really beautiful paint to paint with. And you can see the great coverage. Uh, I'm very surprised by these whites as well. You know I don't paint white and the coverage has always been an issue for me as well and part of the reason why I don't paint white, but it's, um, the coverage is beautiful with these. So to get a nice finish with chalk paint and with silk as well, you just wanna do nice, long, even strokes and you want to let your paintbrush do work. Using a good quality paintbrush is gonna make a huge difference. This is a nice flat surface. I could also use a roller. I've got two Fussy Bloke rollers, which I love using. It's up to you which one you use. I do like to brush. I find it very calming and relaxing, but it's up to you. So, I'm just rolling, uh, just painting, rather. I'm just gonna get this edge, because otherwise I'm gonna end up with a mess along it. Right. If you've got any questions, please ask. I can't see, well, I can see your faces popping up today, so, or well, your names rather, so I'm hoping that I can see your comments too. But if you've got a question, let me know. This is, this is the chalk finish for those who are just joining us. But nice, long, even strokes is gonna give you a much nicer finish. And this suitcase was a very kindly given to me by one of our featured artists in here, Julie from Just By Jewels. And it was very good timing because I was actually on the hunt for a suitcase. So um, I always appreciate little things like this because it does make my life a lot easier when they just come to me. But if you're looking for pieces, um, and I always get asked where I find my pieces, and most of the time I find them on Facebook Marketplace. Um, it's really quite good around here. Every now and then we have our dull periods where not much is popping up. Um, but around here, and I'm in Bendigo, Victoria, um, the, it's, it's, um, it's pretty good. Some places, I, I've been in Melbourne, I lived in Melbourne for a long time there as well. I know it's very good around there. Um, I know some small country towns can't be great uh, for it, but for the most part, I find Buy Swap Sale Groups, Facebook Marketplace are generally the best places to find the best pieces. Uh, if you've got an auction house, I definitely recommend checking them out as well. We've got a great one here that I go to regularly. Uh, but if you can find a piece at a good price, um, 
um, it's, yeah, just jump on it. <laughs> you don't have to get every single piece. And actually, I watched a really good video last night that explained pretty much what I do when I'm looking for a piece. So I might see if I can find that again and share that because I think it's a good example of how to select your pieces. I know it's really exciting at the beginning and you sort of just jump for everything and next minute you've got a garage or a shed full and it becomes very, very overwhelming. I've been there. I'm still there at the moment. <laughs> Every now and then I get a bit carried away. Um, so being really selective with your pieces, making sure that whatever's required for them is something that you are capable of doing, so if it needs repairs, etc. Um, and making sure as well, if you are painting or flipping to sell, that you're going to make a profit at the end of it. Um, so making sure your price point's right, plus your materials, etc. as well. Obviously I am, this one's not, but for the most part I do um, flip pieces to sell them. So I need to make sure that whatever I'm paying is suitable. Um, and that means that I'm still going to make a profit at the end of it. So let's just, let's use that one. I'm oh, sorry, I'm just gonna have a drink. Ooh. Until I put it absolutely everywhere. It's fine. I don't think you guys saw that, so that's fine. <laughs> I'm just going to pop this up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. I'm just going to paint around this edge. The inside is not in amazing condition, but I'm going to clean that up. I'm just not going to do it in today's live. And I am going to paint over these lots. I very rarely paint over hardware. Very, very rarely. Um, because I genuinely don't like it, like doing it, but on a piece like this, I'm not too fussed. As I said, it's a prop. If I was going to sell it, I would actually clean up the hardware. Um, I wouldn't paint over it, but I'm not too fussed today. And I'm not gonna paint the underneath of this one either. It's sitting on the floor, so, um, and it's always going to be on the floor. And as I said, it's just for me. If I was painting this suitcase to sell, I would definitely paint underneath it too. Because uh, I never know what the end user is going to use it for. They might use it as an actual suitcase. So again, just sort of touching in those bits. And I've started with a dry brush as well. Um, I don't think I said that. So my brush is dry. I generally start with a dry brush every now and then. Um, every now and then I won't, but... If my brush is already wet, it's wet, it's not the end of the world. But I do generally like to start with a dry brush. Let me pick that up there. Now I'm painting it awkwardly because I'm trying not to block the camera for you. Again, see how when I'm, I don't know how well the camera shows it. It's so frustrating because I want you just to like be able to come closer and see it. But now I'm cutting in, you can see I'm sort of ruining those nice lines and adding texture that I probably didn't want to add. Alright. So I'm just going to pick that one up. I'm not too fussed about this handle either. I'm going to paint that. I might even come in and do that with a different colour though. So I'm not too fussed if I don't get it white. Today. Oh, why not? Let's do it white. <laughs> this is how I paint. I make things up as I go along and then I decide what I'm doing and where I'm doing it. Um, I go in with like a rough idea of what I want to achieve. But for the most part, I'm very much a just sort of see what happens kind of painter. And if I don't love it, then I'll just paint over it. But that very rarely actually happens. For the most part, I do like what I create and I like the finished results. Um, it's very rare that I actually don't like what I've created. Just trying to, I'm on a dining table, it's actually quite large and I'm just trying to reach everything. Like so. 
So I know it's a bit boring, but I'm painting white, so that's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> I never, ever, ever paint white. And I don't paint white mainly because the coverage. Um, it's white, white is a little bit more work um, as well. And I just like color. I find white very, very boring. I'm finding this incredibly boring, but um, sometimes it's necessary. I will admit some pieces look amazing in white and any other color just would not suit them. But for the most part, I do find white very boring. Um, but some pieces do suit it quite well. And I love white when it's done incredibly well. But um, I don't enjoy white at all. And this is one of the reasons why I don't do custom work either is because everybody wants white and I'm not here for it. So sort of pick what you like. But white is not my cup of tea for those who love it. Good on you. You've got more persistence than what I do. So, oh, I've missed that big bit. I do like with the chalk paint in particular that if you do miss a bit, you can come back in for the most part and touch it up. Um, I often found, find with silk finish that I can't always do that. Sorry, I'm just gonna get rid of that notification. Um, yeah, with silk finish, you can, but you can't. Uh, if it's starting to really dry though, I found it just sort of me messed it up a bit too much. It's really textured just there. And I wasn't getting, I was sort of losing some of that really nice finish because I was touching it. So with paint generally, sorry, all the notifications are coming in now. Um, I generally find that for the blah, blah, blah. I don't know where I was going with that sentence. My mind is not working today, clearly. But for the most part with paint, once it's on, you want to leave it alone. Unless you're building texture, unless you're layering, um, you do just want to leave it alone while it dries. And you want to make sure it's completely dry between coats as well. So um, both paints are between 30 minutes and four hours, but you just want to make sure they're fully dry. So this has still got some, white streak, uh, some wet streaks in it. If I try to paint over that, most of that paint's just gonna lift off and I'm gonna end up with a really awkward, unfinished section. So you do wanna make sure that your paint's dry, completely dry before you're painting over. And the same with finishing, you don't have to wait um, several days or even weeks just until it's touched dry. Although if you are finishing, um, I like to wait sort of overnight just to make sure because you don't want to be finishing over wet paint. You're going to damage your nice finish and you also want to make sure the paint's fully dry as well. And just so you can't see what I'm doing. Lines are hard work. So I've got to make sure that you can see what I'm actually doing. I'm used to just painting in my own little world and nobody has to see what I'm normally doing. So those who do lives all the time love that because I don't know how you do it. I find these, I don't find them stressful, but I do find them very time consuming. And I also don't like talking. I'm not a talker. So trying to find stuff to talk about is, um, it's exhausting. It really is very exhausting. I'm so exhausted. At the end of a really busy day in here, I think I'm more exhausted from the amount of talking that I've done than just being busy. It's the talking and the socialization. I find very exhausting. Um, I'm not a social person. I like my little circle of friends and that's sort of it. <laughs> I don't go out of my way to make new friends because that's just not me. I get a lot of, um, I have quite bad anxiety and a lot of that is socially based. So I do really struggle with the social aspects of owning a shop as well i was i was worried i wouldn't cope as well as what i have with it but i'm so exhausted at the end of a busy day because of all the people that i've had to talk to not that i'm complaining i love the days when everybody walks in we still have days when nobody walks in uh, and that's just part of having a retail shop in this day and age i think but 
it, it can be quite exhausting. And I know there's a few of you who I speak to regularly who are very much the same as me. One more side. So this is, I don't have a watch on, I went to look and I don't have it because I forgot it. Um, I think it's been about 15 minutes. Painting, so it's not, painting each coat of paint isn't overly, when you're just doing a straight color. Um, and again, first coat, it's gonna look ugly. You just sort of slap it on and hope for the best. Um, but, I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> My mind's not working today, can you tell? I'm just going to be quiet for a moment while I try and work out what I was going with that one. If you've got, does anybody have any questions? There's a few of you watching. I'd love if you have a question because that gives me something to talk about. So again, we're just popping it on. Thank you so much for watching as well. And for those of you who have sat there and watched the whole thing. There's a piece of paper or something. Oh, hang on, maybe it will come off. I tried to get some of it off earlier and it didn't want to come off. It doesn't matter. This is for me. If, if I was doing this to sell, I'd 100% spend more time trying to get that off, but I'm not too fussed. And it's just going to add to the overall finish once I'm done as well. All right, so first coat. I have got the heater on in here and I'm, it's pretty warm in here actually. I'm a little bit hot, so. It's pretty much dry on top. So I might show you in a section that is dry. I'm gonna show you the start of the second coat. I'm not gonna be able to show you all of it because I do have to open in a moment, I think, because I don't know what time it is because I'm not wearing a watch. I'm check actually. I hate, 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 hate opening late. Yes, I do have to open in a minute. I knew I did. Um, I hate opening late, it's my I'm not, I don't like being late at all. So I do have to go in a minute, but I will show you. So most of the top is dry. So there's our top, actually. I'm just gonna sit up like this. Can I get that to stay shut? If I can. I paint one side of the lock and not the other, so let me paint the other side. All right, so that's our top. So it's all dry. There's a streak along here that I can see. The rest of it's dry though. So I will show you the start of the second coat. Again, you only have to wait until it's dry. Sharon, um, uh, can I do classes? Yes, I can. I can. Uh, we're in Bendigo, Victoria. I have classes. I have four more dates. Uh, four more? Three more dates this year for um, our introduction workshop where I go through the prep, the painting and the finishing. Hands on, I provide everything, um, but it's a, it's a great class for beginners. And then I also run a one-on-one uh, -on -one class as well where you can bring a piece and we can do whatever you want to do. But we absolutely can. You'll find them on my website, thepainterbrush.com.au underneath workshops. Otherwise, just pop in store. I'm at 37, um, 37 High Street in Eagle Hawk. And I am open today, 10 to 1, and tomorrow, 10 to 1 as well. So again, second coat. Work methodically around those edges. And then all the way along. Oh, wonderful. I look forward to meeting you, Sharon. So... I'm just going to avoid this bit that is still wet. I'm painting with my non-dominant hand. Hang on, let me scooch around. I don't like painting with my left. It actually feels very uncomfortable. But, so second coat. And this is really great coverage. Now, cloud. This is cloud in chalk finish. It is a grey base. It is not a pure white. It has quite a lot of pigment in it. So I'm going to get better coverage with this than what I would with um, snow or even cotton. Isn't quite as good as this either. But this has quite a lot of pigment in it. So I am going to get the better coverage. All right, that bit seems to be dry enough. I'm just going to, I can just see it's a little bit wet. It's not the end of the world. It doesn't matter what, for what I'm doing. 
So nice long strokes are going to give you a nicer finish. And using a good quality paintbrush is also going to help. It is, I need to turn that heater off. It's very warm in here. I'm just going to spray that a little bit because it is drying really fast. There's also quite a lot of paint on my brush by this point. If you're finding that the paint's not moving and it feels like it's dragging a lot, sometimes it can also be your paintbrush where the paint on the brush has started to dry as well. And that can be causing some of your problems. So if you're really having a lot of problem, a lot of problems, go in and grab, grab yourself a new paintbrush as well. I've got a big stack of paintbrushes. You can really never have enough. But I do recommend having an extra one on hand just in case you are having problems. It's I can feel this heater. I thought it was on 20, but it's I'm like sweating now. It's very hot in here. So, and I can feel my paint is really dragging. But that's all right. So, I'm gonna finish this second coat. Just on the lid. I'll wait for the rest of it to dry fully. This will be the rest of today's project. I would, I want to have this completely painted by the end of today. Is the aim. And then next weekend, I've got some new products coming. I'm hoping they will arrive this week. And once they do, We'll have a very exciting live next weekend showing them off, showing off what they are. And it's something a lot of you, I've had them before and I've been asked constantly, do I have them, am I getting them? So, well, I finally am. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this was Pure Eco Chalk Finish in the Colour Cloud. Let me come around so I can see you all. Pure Eco Chalk Finish Cloud. Hello, Nicola. Good morning. Um, we're painting one coat all over except for the very, very top where I have painted. I just noticed I've got a huge drip underneath this lid. There we go. Um, we've painted the first coat except for the top where we have just painted the second coat. Um, two to three coats for most whites. Um, most of the colours are only two coats. There are a few that still need the three. Um, I've talked about prep, etc. So I will. This will be saved to my Facebook page. I've also worked out how to put, how to download lives and then pop them up on my YouTube channel as well. So I'm doing that for you as well, so that you can watch on either. Either I know it can be a bit hard to find them on Facebook. Um, once there's a few posts and etc., they can be really, really hard to find. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see my lovely locals in the studio today. We're open 10 till 1 and we are now open every Sunday as well, 10 till 1. Uh, tomorrow is our first official Sunday. We've had two trials and they've been incredible. So I hope to see you all today. Have an absolute wonderful day. It's um, semi nice weather outside, so hopefully you get to go outside if you're a local. Uh, as for everyone else, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I will see you next weekend. Bye, everyone. Ooh.